Hello, I'm Michael Glass from michaelglass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, you want to start off with our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market technical analysis trading plan. In our video, we'll look at the past week's economic calendar and also look forward to next week. We'll see what happened as far as the most recent price action to identify key support and resistance price levels. We're going to look at the charts of the market leaders, Apple, Google, Goldman Sachs, Priceline. We'll take a look at those. We'll look at the dollar, gold, and crude oil charts to see if there's any leading sentiment. And finally, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. Okay, as we begin to look at the week that was, uh, we it's good to be back. We took a little week off there. Uh, one of my son's birthday was last weekend, and so we had a lot of fun. And so did the stock market. Look at this. Uh, for the week that was, both the... All of the indexes, the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones, and the S&P 500 all rose. But it wasn't just a good week. We've had a great month for the, for the market. Uh, we have reared our head above 1250 for the first time in two months. Uh, the 1200 did not hold down as resistance. Uh, Thursday, we had another good uh, uh, gaining session uh, for, the, uh, for the first two weeks. And then we see that, uh, as we say, finances leave the S&P 500. And so as the banks are rising, so does the S&P 500. And we can see we have four straight weekly gains here in October. For, for the month, we're up more than 13%. I remember, obviously, at the beginning of the month, we were down 5%. And now we're up 6%. So uh, as you look at the top, so we, we've certainly had a good month. Um, could this be the the uh, legendary Santa Claus run uh, for the market? Well, we'll have to see if this can be sustained. Um, there was some news across the seas. We've got the Eurozone uh, promising to raise its bailout uh, 1.4 tr trillion. They're going to cut Greece's debt by 50%, how much they're obliged to uh, pay back. Um, and so that really uh, caught some of the news early in the week. Um, uh, for our Forex people, we saw the Euro dollar and the pound dollar shoot back up and that dollar franc um, fall off. Really wasn't that much going on on a corporate side, um, but we did have uh, GDP show up at 2.5% uh, compared to the 2.3% of expected. And remember, the last one was 1.3, so we did get some good economic news for the week. As we move into next week, we can see, uh, we already saw that we didn't have much going on on the corporate news, and this week we don't have much going on here. We I put down MasterCard only because I think sometimes they say something about the consumer that that could uh, be impactful. But this is, of course, our jobs week. We got ADP on Wednesday. We also have employment situation on Friday. But snuck in between all of that is we have the FOMC announcement on Wednesday afternoon also. So we do have some big movers this week that we certainly want to be aware of. Let's pull up the charts and talk about this great month of October for the market. So here we are looking at the daily chart of the S&P 500 and some good news here. We, you can see the swing high that once we broke above, you know, we, we, we really took off. We also closed in here on the 200 moving average. And where we're hitting here at the 1300, 1290 price level is really matching up with the swing low here from back in July. So we'll, we'll see how much this acts as resistance. But notice on our daily, I mean, we're really starting to get overbought. Stochastic's overbought. RSI is basically up there overbought. And MACD is heading its way up there, too. So uh, we certainly have had this great move from the, uh, the the October move. I mean, we talked about the October uh, being four straight weeks up. And we can see that exhibited here, here on our daily chart. So the important news here is that we are above the 200 moving average. Our moving averages are crossing over, heading back up. So we'll see if this 1294 uh, will hold up as resistance as the indicators are showing overbought on the daily. But let's swing out and see. We'll go to, on out to the weekly charts here. And the weekly, again, we can see that... Uh, 
1294 price level resistance. You can see where he bounced in here again in uh, July. And there's a couple other places where it's being honored. So it, it definitely is a point of interest. Um, but our weekly still has room to go on all of our indicators. So there is a little bit more room to go here. Uh, don't know if we'll retest the 2011 high, but there is a little bit more room to go in the weekly as far as our indicators. So that's good. So in our dual time frame agreement, we will want to see uh, maybe a little pullback on a daily and then get that next move up because there is more room to go in a weekly. And I'm sure that means there's going to be, oh, but wait, but wait, but wait, but wait. What did we see on the daily? I'm sorry, the monthly, the monthly you know, has, has already reached that overbought level and is crossing over. And this is really just a pullback in that. Uh, so that's interesting. Our monthly are still just a little bit already uh, overbought. Um, so we have a little disagreement there. The weekly and daily kind of showing the same thing, but our longer time frame shows that we've had this great move from 2009 and we had it, you know, up to our 2011 highs. And now we're getting our pullback, the support of the 200 moving average there. But uh, it should be, it's going to be interesting. I mean, there is, we certainly could reverse back up, but our, our monthly charts are showing us a little bit there. So we're going to have to see which time frame is going to win on that. What can, what can impact that? Well, of course, our catalyst. And next week, we do have a catalyst, FOMC, and employment situation. Now let's zoom on back down to our daily and switch over to the NASDAQ. And we can see, zoom in a little bit here, here we are uh, above the 200 moving average, uh, very nice. And if we go back, say we go back to January, and we don't have this line on here, so let's go ahead and put that on here. Price level, there's our July price action there, and you can see that line up right with where we are right now, so our July lines up right where we are now above the 200 moving average and there are moving averages coming up again the great month of October indicators a uh, little overbought here on stochastic overbought uh, heading to overbought here on our side MACD getting there too so just like the S&P 500 we'll zoom out just a little bit to our weekly and we will see uh, again there's our our price level here. What's interesting is that now we're starting to attack this uh, beginning of August candle and we're halfway through it. So that's going to be interesting whether or not we can get through here. And if we do get through here, I mean, there is a rationale that says if we get through this 2750 price level, that we may go test the, the, the uh, swing highs um, as we reclaim uh, this candle here. On the Nasdaq, and I'll I'll take a second and go back to the S&P 500. You can see the same thing. As a matter of fact, the S&P 500, we've almost already done that. We've almost already taken out that uh, August uh, candle. We we tested it. Also, notice that we could bring this uh, line right there. What happens if we draw that out? So there's there's another place that we need to look at as far as resistance. We got resistance right here at 1295, and then another resistance up here around 1315. Going back to our Nasdaq, uh, you kind of see the same thing, but so our indicators here have more room to go higher. So that's what we talked about before. Maybe if we get a little pullback on the daily, we can get a dual time frame agreement with the daily and weekly. But let's see if the monthly is out of uh, wax with those. And it is just like the S&P 500. Our monthly is still in the overbought range coming out of it. And you can see, you know, uh, we sort of got our inside bar here for September and October is taking it out. Again, rationale for us to possibly to go ahead and test the swing high here um, if we can get the catalyst to move us above where we are right now. Let's see what our market leaders are saying uh, about our potential move.
Okay, first up for our market leaders is Apple. And one thing we can see about Apple is that it's in a range here where the market really consolidates. Um, I didn't draw my price level here, a uh, resistance line, because you, you know you can see that price really just kind of goes through it and, and, and or around it. Uh, let me go back here. So here's where it is. Well, let's go ahead and draw it just so you can see what I'm talking about. And go back. And we can see the price action. It's not really honored. It goes right through it, comes right back down, right through it, comes right back down. Uh, so that's why I, I didn't draw it. Uh, but what I do want you to see, though, is that there is an accumulation in this area, but it's not really acting as a resistance or support price level. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it. Oops. Um, and you can see over here on our market profile, you can see how the price is really accumulating here at the 405 price level. So Apple, uh, October was good for Apple, but you notice that Apple pulled back. So while the market was moving higher, Apple actually pulled back. Now there were some earnings in there, uh, and uh, 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 the numbers were a little disappointing, and so it's uh, consolidating now. So Apple, I'm going to have to say sideways. But Amazon. Amazon also disappointed with its earnings and had this gap down to the 200 million average um, and now it's trying to make its way back up uh, but you know we have to say the same thing Amazon sideways sideways to up maybe um, you can see the accumulation of price here at a 201 uh, but disappointing earnings uh, so it's interesting to see the market moving up here with the disappointing earnings let's take a look at Google well, Google did not have disappointing earnings, and look at that gap up, but no follow through. Right now, we're going sideways, and you can see that on a market profile really here over the past couple of days uh, in the 600 price level. So we gapped up, and we're just kind of hovering there. So Google, I would say sideways. But here's where we really see a change here with Goldman Sachs. And Goldman Sachs cleared downtrend forever. And then we finally broke the 20 moving average as resistance, and then we even broke the 50 moving average resistance. And and the S&P move that we see from October, we see that in Goldman Sachs, where the financial goes, the market tends to go also. And so we see the move in Goldman Sachs entering this new range. You also could say uh, you see this wick here, right here, uh, that matches up with the wick where we are on Friday. So we could actually, if you want to, I know sometimes I get a little. Uh, OCD on my lines, but I like lines. <laughs> my support and resistance trend lines, I like them. Um, and so, uh, uh, you know, so we really do see the bullish move here in uh, the financials in Goldman Sachs. So Goldman Sachs, I'm actually going to say up, but keep in mind, again, in the bigger picture, still <laughs> way off uh, the highs. Now another one, and I'm not even sure this qualifies as a leader anymore, but look at Netflix. I mean, remember Netflix, as early as July, two, three months ago, $304, uh, $304. At the end of October, $84. Also had disappointing earnings. I think they say they lost 8 million uh, uh, subscribers. You know, that's the August, September was when the new pricing structure happened. Uh, we, we tailed off, and after we bought them, disappointing earnings, and we fell down even more. So uh, certainly has been a great fall. So I, I like to share, if, if for no other reason, just to show you how fast market sentiment can change. Uh, but, you know, so you have to say sideways it down for Netflix. And finally, Priceline. Priceline, you would say sideways. You can see... Uh, kind of go up and down, up and down. It is at sort of a resistance part line. We can see the accumulation of price here. Um, so we really only have Goldman Sachs as the one that I would say up. For the most part, after that, we basically have sideways. Uh, we've have Apple and Amazon, um, Netflix earnings not meeting what the market want. Um, Goldman Sachs doing well. So the market is really showing us that perhaps maybe we will pause here. 
Uh, but again, maybe our economic catalyst will give us that move that we need to move over. Let's check um, some of our other market sentiment indicators with gold, the dollar, and crude oil. Okay, as we start with our market sentiment indicators, we're starting off with the dollar. And as beautiful as the S&P 500 has been for October, we have the inverse relationship with the dollar. Just a complete fall off of the dollar. Beautiful run up and now a, a beautiful run down. Uh, put in a little inside bar there after a big down day here. And, um, you know, so our next support level we have here is 74.4. Um, so uh, for our Forex people, weak dollar. And again, we see the euro dollar and the pound dollar really taking off and the dollar franc pulling back. Um, but, uh, you know, so it's going to be interesting what we see this week with the FOMC uh, uh, Wednesday afternoon that will either change this trajectory. Um, if they announce any new uh, quantitative easing, this will probably pull back even more. So, uh, weak dollar, good for the market. What about gold? Gold consolidated for a while, and anybody, again, who watches my Forex channel and Move Up with Mike on YouTube knows that we talked about this range that the market was in. Uh, and that we said once we finally get out of this range, we should get a good move, and we got exactly that. Once we finally closed above the range, uh, we went from 1680 up to about 70. So we had about a 60-80 uh, point move here, um, and notice that we're putting inside bar doji right here at our previous resistance line. So um, uh, gold, you know, you still say I still say sideways because remember we have these three big candles here. And we just basically took it back. We really need to get back into this channel, the 1750 up to 8, 1900 channel, to really get really bullish on it. Uh, it's very possible that we pull back. But, again, we have some news this week. And if it's weak for the dollar, it will be good for gold. Finishing off with crude oil. Um, a good month for crude oil. Ran all the way back up here to the 200 moving average. Um, and we'll see what happens here at 96. As we move to our education spotlight, um, we're going to do something that, that I rarely do, almost never do, and that is repeat something that I've shared uh, this week. Uh, for those of you who follow, uh, you know, I have my single traders channel, and that is purely focused on the stock market. Every now and then I'll, I'll sprinkle in a little Forex, but it's it's geared towards the stock market, day trading, futures, stuff like that. Um, my uh, Move Up With My channel, uh, the Michael Glass channel for YouTube, is focused on Forex. And I actually do daily videos on Forex, and I know many on my stock market side have asked me to do, start doing that again. I used to always do daily markets for that, but again, you know, it takes time to do these things. But anyway, so uh, for those of you who are watching me on the Forex side, know that I, I do daily videos, and I'm going to share something that I shared in the last night video with the stock market. So I'm, it's a little repetitive. And that's because we know that at, as my core uh, is the importance of trading plans. And, and from Ascendo Traders to Michael Glass and with Mike, and even on my new channel, I have a, a inspirational channel that's really I put together with all the coaching that I do and all the people that I interact with, I find that, you know, as we talk about, emotions is one of the biggest detractors of successful traders that they, people get sidetracked by, by things. But in addition to that, um, people need to be motivated. Uh, people need to be inspired. And so, uh, so a lot of the coaching that I do and working with people, sometimes it's just really motivating them. So I, I have a channel, One Minute Inspiration, where we're just one minute videos on, you know, encouraging people to be what they want to be. And so um, those are my channels, but I wanted to bring this to the stock market channel about the trading process so that, you know, we can continue to have this discussion. What are your stocks? What are your Forex? What are your options? No matter what it is, you still have to have a process to trading. So one of the first things you have to do is come up with your candidates, candidates. and whatever your, your filter is, what you want to do is start on a smaller time frame. So for the stock market, maybe that's a 15-minute chart, maybe it's a 5-minute chart. 
um, maybe it's a one hour chart. You want to filter and look at support and resistance, look at trend lines, look at uh, um, chart patterns, and try to come up with some potential trades. And then you want to confirm that by looking at the big picture. That's that dual time frame agreement. What does the weekly chart say? What does the daily chart say? What is the monthly? What is yearly? What is the big picture? And if we can find that long term uptrend, that is pulling back on the short term and then we can find that confirmation of it swinging back on a shorter time frame to agree with that longer time frame those are that's that sweet spot you know for our golfers so when we can get that dual time frame agreement that's great and that's how we can filter first find those trades on a short, shorter time frame and then when, it, when you can find those agreeing with the longer time frame you filter down even more then of course we want to check the economic calendar to make sure that what we're trading is not going to be coming in, uh, in combat with earnings, with the economic uh, uh, situation, employment situation that's going to be released this week. Now you want to make sure that you're aware of what can affect the emotion, the market sentiment of those stocks uh, or commodities that you're trading. Of course, then you want to be able to identify your risk reward ratio, and this is something that's really key. You know, how do you define risk? I'm going to participate in a, a, a discussion today, a panel today, and it's the gentleman, um, uh, you know, is more of a fundamental analysis than a technical analysis. And one of the main things I'm going to, I'm going to talk about is risk and how technical analysis helps us define risk. And then whether you're a fundamental, uh, believe in fundamentals or technical, you have to believe in risk and know what your risk is. And so where's your entry, where's your exit, where's your stop? And then finally, you know, to actually get in a trade, you need a final car confirmation. Now, you know, some people use technical indicators, volume, um, price level breaks. Uh, it, it, it could be many things, but that is your final. I filtered, I've confirmed, I've identified my entry, and now I need my trigger to enter the trade. This really falls into uh, uh, who we are at Mover of Mike as coaches and what we believe in. You know you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, and our page, Are You Financially Literate? But that process is what we share in our free five-part video course, how to do that. Uh, we help you frame the market into developing your own high trading training setups, and we hope that that helps you and give you a gauge to who we are as coaches and how we can help you one-on-one -on -one, develop that personalized training plan, develop your own process, your own way of filtering, your own way of confirming, and find your own way of ending a trade that allows you to have a trading mindset to trade the same trading plan day after day after day. And, you know, so we have this great uh, uh, video course. Our video course breaks down the market into three courses. We've got the introduction for those people who need to be introduced to training. Then we go into the training plan components, what you should have. Uh, and then we give you training setups. And we give you for the rock bottom price of $99. We've cut it down because we've been successful in getting this out to people at the cheaper price. Because for us, it's not about giving you a 3000 This is a $3,000 system for only $99. But we want to help you as coaches because we believe that systems and information is not what's going to change you. Changing your mindset is what's going to make you a better trader. If you're looking for future trades, we have that for you. Intraday margin low is $300. And of course, if you are looking for a, a training package where you can do your scans and find your fast movement stocks, we have that for you too. As we just said, it's not about the system, it's not about the indicator. We can give you that information. We want to provide it for you at an affordable price. But it's really our ability to help you develop that trade mindset that's really going to help you pull the trigger, help you be disciplined and focused, and be a successful and consistent trader. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.